Welcome back. Now, access to quality education is critical to ending poverty. These are just some of the words of President Cyril Ramaphosa during his State of the Nation address. The president congratulated the matric class of 2022, praising them for defying the odds. And he further announced that government is looking into introducing a new student funding model. So to get some reaction, I'm joined by Amnesty International spokesperson Minka Staitler this uh, morning. Minka, thank you so much for your time and uh, good morning to you. Uh, I suppose your reaction uh, to the president to yes, last night's state of the nation address I mean from a more educational perspective what did you make of the president's speech yes so from an educational perspective it was good that he spoke about education and he quite rightly pointed out that it is important for South Africa it's probably the most important cornerstone of our economy of our future of our youth yet Sadly, as usual, the details were quite vague. Um, for example, he mentioned the infrastructure and the gains that have been made in infrastructure and that schools, about, I think, 55,000 um, uh, uh, clean toilets have been installed at schools. But what we would have wanted to hear was have these replaced pit toilets, for example? Have pit toilets been um, eradicated? Uh, there's a deadline coming up at the end of the month that um, the government set for themselves. And yet again, it looks like they're going to miss it. They're going to move the goalposts on pit to toilets. And it's just vague on details. And that's worrying because that's a way of, as far as we're concerned, dodging accountability. And, you know, those days are over. And, and this is exactly precisely it, because uh, the president did mention 55,000, uh, you know, appropriate, um, you know, toilets were built. That's what he said. Appropriate. I mean, we need more definition about what's appropriate, um, what's enough for government for these young children, because pit toilets have been a problem for a very long time. An extremely long time. And, and it's just, the, the government is just keep, like I said, moving the goalposts. And what, as you, as you rightly pointed out, what is an appropriate, you know, what is the proper definition of that? Um, in our own research, we, for example, have really struggled to find clear numbers of pit toilets. The, the uh, National Education Infrastructure Management System reports for 2022, to our knowledge, has not been published. So it's really hard to find those actual details, to, to really dig deep. And um, the same goes for the new funding model, for example. Like, it's nice to mention that you're going to do a new funding model, but how does how will this exactly pan out and is it is that information going to be made you know transparent and clear and communicated publicly in a way that everybody can understand mm. And also, if you have a new funding model, what was wrong with the previous one? Right. And why is that, for example, not being uh, talked about? Yeah, know? I think that's definitely one of the questions as to how exactly we're going to get to this funding model, uh, the intricacies, how will it work? So much vagueness when it comes uh, to that. But I want to also talk about the performance of learners here. The president made mention of it, Minka, uh, the performance of learners from poor communities, uh, attributing that good performance to the improved, uh, you know, or the, 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 the improvement of that performance to the uh, improved support that they have received from government. In this instance, the president was referring to learners in poorer communities. Uh, what support has government uh, given to learners in rural communities, township communities? Has it been sufficient when we look at the allocation of textbooks, infrastructure? We spoke about pit toilets earlier on. Can we rate it good support from government? They like to say that they're giving good support, but I actually think we should tip our hats to the learners themselves for really overcoming or trying to overcome um, their own personal situations and really being victorious in that sense, because the support that the government gives really is not good enough yet. Yes, maybe some learners have received textbooks, maybe there is Wi-Fi and access to internet, um, especially uh, you know during and post-pandemic, but what our research and what we have found before and what other organizations have worked on for years, for example, Equal Education and Section 27, is mm. that this support still falls far short. And um, you will still find that the government likes to really um, brag about the pass rate. But again, no mention is made of the young people who didn't make it to matric, the mm. young people who didn't make it 
grade 12 and to do uh, uh, those exams and to really have the opportunity to go to university or to college or into vocational training. I think he mentioned that as well. Yeah. And, and there's just never any mention made of that or any w mention made of how that will be tackled and how those that are left behind, and mm. the government let, likes to say leave no one behind, but those that are left behind, what is being done for them? Yeah, where are those learners is the question and how they, uh, you know, get exactly. be, being led back into the system so they can complete their matric. And I'm glad you mentioned that because the dropout rate in the country has equally been worrisome, Minka. Uh, and would, it would have been great to hear the president uh, speaking on it. I have to let you go in a couple of minutes. Before I do, the safety of learners and teachers in school was in the spotlight recently. Let's look at Khaliksdal Secondary School. An intruder, you know, getting into a school, uh, stabbing a teacher, uh, being, you know, shot uh, and, and dying in school premises, a teacher having a gun on school premises. I would have expected that with that making headlines, that's something the president would have definitely highlighted about learner safety in schools. It was a, a definite disappointment not to hear anything especially since the last week has been so incredibly shocking. Um, the violence at school had started, I think, even with a, an assault at a school in Kruger's Dorp. And then um, uh, the, the, the learner that was um, murdered at his school in Gelukstal. And then, of course, the incident of the person who managed to enter school promises, pr premises with a knife. Mm. Um, it would have been great to hear again detail. So we did see that um, the government, uh, the Department of Education has said that they will up security at school and Gauteng, but what does that mean? Like, yeah. you can say that in a statement, but what does that entail? And also, there needs to be a debate around whether, um, a, you know, a, a weapons should be allowed on school premises at all, and if there is not another way to really secure students and secure learners. Because in our constitution, it says that we all have the right to live a life that's free from violence and mm -hmm. also to have the right to life. And those details are, are important. And again, it just comes down to details, details, details. It's, it's, it's year after year. It's promises made. Mm vague promises um and and yet and then we don't see them delivered anyway um yes he was quite honest in in parts of his um especially when he's talking about the energy crisis but um yes the, the lack of detail on violence in schools which and even you know another thing i thought about was this week there was also only 18 percent of 10 year olds can read for meaning as well and there was no mention of that either mm. and that is also a catastrophe. Right. That is also a challenge that's really facing our country. Just, just lastly, before I let you go, um, the national state of disaster, because obviously the president says is to uh, assist with the load shedding and the energy crisis to stop it from complete blackout. Briefly, please, in a few seconds, if you may, uh, will that assist at all? You know, learners being impacted by load shedding, having to write exams under load shedding, heavily affected as well. Could this be the answer? What's your reaction? Turning late for school, turning up late for school because traffic lights are out. Um, personally, the the things that he said that can happen under the state of disaster should have happened already. Um, you, you don't need a state of disaster to just deliver basic services and to make sure that schools and hospitals have the electricity, or um, to make sure that during the school run, which everyone knows it is really at a specific time of day, um, that traffic lights are not out and that there are massive traffic, you know, uh, that really. Uh, uh, withholds it really impacts learners mm. access to education as well so again yes a state of disaster fantastic but these things should happen anyway they we shouldn't have to have waited for a state of disaster for them to happen and then again we'll see if they happen yeah. or not for everybody minka thank you so much for talking to me this morning that was amnesty international spokesperson minka statler